Welcome to another video analysis for virtualracingschool.com. This week in the GT3 series we're at Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit and once again we'll be looking at the Z4. Uh, so Brands Hatch is actually only a two hour drive uh, from from my house um, in the UK in Kent and uh, the version our racing have produced is, is fantastic. Um, it does however, as we'll find out shortly, uh, require a great deal of accuracy and precision to extract the best lap times from. Um, and I've, I've always found it a big challenge with pretty much no margin for error. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and watch the replay of one of my hot laps, qualifying laps, qualifying fuel. Um, with the setup that I've used for the data pack, um, which again uh, you can also find all GT3 card data packs on virtualracingschool.com. Uh, so this is a 123.3. Uh, yeah, so pretty good lap. Um, obviously, there's room for improvement, but we'll uh, we'll find out shortly. So here we go. Okay, so we're going to jump right in and uh, take the run through Paddock Hill Bend. So dropping down into third gear, hard on the throttle as, uh, as the car compresses at the bottom. So, yeah, so running towards uh, Graham Hill, um, Paddock Hill, sorry. <laughs> uh, we want to keep the car quite nicely to the right um, because the the circuit's a bit lower and uh, you get a little bit more acceleration keeping the car closer to the wall. I've not done so on this lap um, because I wanted a, a nice wide entry into into turn one for my qualifying lap. Um, so for the end of the lap really you want to be hugging the wall there. Um, doesn't matter so much um, to start to start your your hot lap. So yeah, breaking about what was that just before 100? Yeah. So I don't actually use that marker as my reference. Um, I don't really use a reference to be honest. I uh, I pretty much just look look towards the apex. Um, it's it's quite important in uh, in a lot of these blind corners to to really look far through the corner um, so I'm looking quite far ahead um, dropping down to fourth as you get really close to this grass here um, but you, you've also obviously got to be quite careful not to to, to put a wheel off um, just kind of once you've done your initial braking roll it in um, I'm probably going to trail brake, yep, yeah, trail braking. I'm also kind of balancing the throttle a little bit. Um, so, I'll explain what I'm doing there. Um, 
I'm on the throttle now, and that's because the car's turning in a little bit better than I want it to. Um, so that slight throttle, 15%, 20%, is inducing understeer. Um, so it's just it's just about controlling the way the car's turning in, and likewise, trail braking is going to to make the car turn in better. So it's a balancing act, really, and and um, because you have to be so precise on this circuit. Um, I'm not always very precise uh, with the steering, so I find I find it necessary to kind of play with the pedals a little bit, just to get the the nose to hook up exactly where I want it. Um, so yeah, as you go through Paddock Hill, um, the car will go very very light here. It'll almost float, but notice I'm really hard on the power, straight to full power, because I know that the car is going to compress a lot on the exit and um, you really hook up on the exit with a, a ridiculous amount of grip um, so it's, it's just a matter of practice really um, so I'm just going to play this through into drills now so braking just before 50 there down into second gear keeping it tight but then letting it run a bit wide on the exit we'll go back yeah, I think I'm braking mm, about 70 meters there. Um, hard on the brakes. You can you can be very hard on the brakes uh, because it's an uphill braking zone, and uh, you get a little bit more grip. But then as the car crests now, um, you need to kind of allow for that and maybe slow your apex down a little bit more. I'm trail braking, and I have been for a. Uh, pretty much the entire entry phase into this corner um, I'm hugging it keeping it tight gone straight back to about 50-60% throttle keeping it through now I'm opening the steering up still not quite at full power now I'm at full power and I won't lift off again until I reach Graham Hill Bend So. Now, it's quite a tricky corner, Graham Hill. Um, downhill, and you always find that you need to shave a little bit more speed. Well, I, I find I need to shave off a little bit more speed uh, than I feel I should be able to carry. Um, so... I'm breaking what about 70% there because um, I'm not traveling too fast at this point just trail braking slightly to get it into the apex and now the exit you can let the car run out using all of that it's not grass creep because I know that those are plastic grittings uh, <laughs> so I really don't know what to call it this time but um, there is plenty of grip out there in, in the R-Racing version at least and yeah you can pretty much just get hard on the throttle and open the steering right up opening the steering up letting the car use all of this area the only thing that you need to be cautious of if we um, come out of the car quickly is the exit um, it disappears right there so you can get a 1x off that corner of grass if you just leave it a little bit too wide for too long. So into turn 4, Surtees. This is actually, for me, the trickiest corner on the whole circuit. Especially in the Z4. For some reason, ah, the, the balance of the car on entry is just really really tricky and uh, it's either understeering or or trying to kill you with oversteer um, <laughs> so you'll see if you watch carefully my pedal inputs again are, um, are very animated let's say so what are we doing okay about 80% on the brakes as we're turning uh, I actually so I, I, I do something interesting there, I blip the throttle. So the car actually has auto blip, but I find if I don't... 
I don't know, it just helps me to, to blip the throttle manually myself um, because the act of changing down really unsettles the rear end. And um, the, the problem is... The problem is you're fighting understeer, but at the same time you're you're fighting snap oversteer from the from the rear wheels braking. So yeah. So that was one blip, and then down into second another blip, and then I'm kind of balancing the brake and throttle, trail braking, trail braking, back on the power <clears throat> to about sixty percent. So that was quite nice. On the exit, I'm able to get to to full power before this curb. So on the run down to fourth horn bend in fourth gear, the car likes to understeer on the entry to this corner sure why because it's uphill so you'd expect there to be plenty of grip but but for some reason you get understeer and it's really you really have to to trail brake a lot to get the, the the nose of the car into the apex into this one so trail braking trail braking and really really hard on the power so once I've hooked up with my Apex now, bang, straight to 100% throttle. And the reason for that is if I, if I gradually added throttle, that would induce understeer initially. Um, so by going straight to full power, um, that's going to reduce that effect. This is a very tricky corner on the exit because um, this curb here really unsettles um, unsettles the car, and you you uh, you can end up bouncing a little bit. Um, so you've got to be really sort of patient on the throttle um, on the exit of this one. So yeah, this one's this one's Westfield Bend. <laughs> I'm looking at a map because um, I can't remember all of these. Uh, but yeah, this is turn six. So. Um, I think we're dropping down into third gear, braking just after this. So I, d I actually used that patch on, on the uh, on the tarmac there. So there's a like a sandy looking patch on the on the track, and I pretty much brake on that by the looks of things. Um, that's certainly what I use as my reference. So down into third trail braking but kind of balancing with the throttle because I want to be this this clip nicely to be honest that was a good amount of curb um, but you have to be careful with the throttle on the exit wait for the car to settle let it run out wide onto this curb here that's fine but wait for the car to settle before getting onto the full power otherwise yeah you're going to be in a world of trouble Dingledale corner. <laughs> this one has a blind apex, so um, from th from this point, you can't. It's it's guesswork basically. Um, so again, through this sequence of corners where you've got these blind apexes, it's uh, it's very important to sort of look far ahead through the corner, um, so that when the apex does come into view, your eyes are already pretty much on it, so um, you can react as as quickly as as possible, really. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really know what to use as a reference here, uh, but it looks like I'm breaking it. Well, I don't know. I mean, 70 meters. Um, kind of rolling it in, trail breaking. I was actually a little bit wide here, so just show you that. Yeah, so you can actually get away with cutting the, the corner another half a car's width more. Um, 
that will just allow you to carry a little bit more speed. Um, because I was wide here, I had to wait a little bit here before I could get to full power. Um, so they cost me a little bit of time, but because there's only a very, very short straight after it, it it's minimal. Um, this next corner I actually nailed on this lap, so that was nice. Um, Sterling's bend. Um, turn 8. So... It's uh, another very, very tricky corner. Um, because the exit feels... You almost have to cut the inside, or, or aim to. Um, but then the exit is always tighter than you expect. Um, and you do have a, a bit more of a straight after that to... Uh, to make sure that you prioritise the exit. Down into third. Just uh, rolling on the inside curve there. Really, really nicely on the exit because I had no dramas. Sometimes you can get a really nasty slide on the exit. Um, but that will cost you time for sure. So, um, so breaking again about 70 metres into third. Yep, the car's hooked up really nicely uh, if I show you that that's exactly where you want it um, I couldn't really have done this corner much better actually um, and it's 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 so easy to to put a wheel on the grass here and then you're you know all sorts of trouble um, the, the track is so narrow here at Brands um, that um, again it's this is why it's so critical to to be precise and accurate there, there, there's really only one line throughout the entire circuit. Um, it's not like um, wide open circuits like Silverstone or Circuit of the Americas where um, you know the circuit's kind of open to multiple lines. Uh, it's, there's pretty much just one line that's going to work here. So so yeah, no dramas. Just trail breaking it off. Oh, rolling there actually. 80% throttle, the car is, I felt the car is nice and planted, so I'm able to get hard on the power really early. Um, I think I'm actually, yeah, so as I'm on the apex, I'm already at 80% throttle, which is exactly what you want. So into the final corner, clear ways. It's a very interesting corner this because you've got all sorts of camber and elevation changes. Um, so kind of mid corner, um, the car is kind of cresting, so the car goes a bit light here, um, and then you get over the crest, and then you come back down, and there's plenty of camber on the exit. So you can kind of carry a bit more speed than you think through the apex, um, and the extra camber and, and compression on the exit is going to sort of collect you up. Um, but it does mean, with that commitment that you need to be quick, uh, you can you can end up very close to this outside edge, and uh, you can very easily put a, a wheel onto the grass onto the exit. Um, so yeah, breaking about 70 meters again. That pretty much seems to be the same for every corner. <laughs> um, yeah, just kind of balancing it, um, and again, pretty much. At the apex, or even slightly before, I'm already um, on 70% throttle, and then hard on the throttle as I drop down. And, and so as I said earlier in the lap, or the beginning of the lap, um, keeping it tight to the wall. Um, the circuit is much lower in elevation here, so you're likely to to um, accelerate a bit bit faster. And obviously it's a qualifying lap, so the entry into to, uh, Paddock Hill doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, again, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope this one's been, been useful. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very, very, very tricky circuit. Um, certainly one of the toughest on the cal calendar. And uh, very unforgiving. So um, yeah, thanks a lot and uh, see you next week.